Hello friends and welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're going to make French onion baked pork chops. So what you see on my counter is what we're going to use to make this and we're making four pork chops. Now you could use boneless or bone in, that's your choice. Everything else you see on the counter really isn't a lot to use. You got some eggs, some buttermilk, some Ritz crackers. Yes, Ritz crackers. We've got some garlic and herb seasoning. We have some breadcrumbs and an onion soup mix. And that's literally all we're using to make this. But it's going to work out really great. It's going to have such a great flavor to it. And the best thing about it is you're getting a kick of flavor just from the onion soup mix alone. Because there's so much already in there to give it a flavor. Like if you were going to make soup out of this that we're going to add that to the garlic and herb from Kingsford and it just it's such a great thing to have on the outside of these pork chops but you're going to have to preheat your oven to 400 degrees because we need it heated up before we get these ready to go in there and then we're going to start working with this so we're going to start with opening up our stuff here we're going to go with a third of a cup of breadcrumbs that might have Italian seasoning in them then we're going to take our Ritz crackers which we have like 10 to 12 of these and we're just going to break these up and we're not going to try to pulverize these we're just going to basically put in like you know to a point where we've broken them into small bits because we want them to coat the outside of the pork chop and give it a crunch but we're not trying to like shred it down to like powder so go ahead and break these up with your hands that's the easiest way to do it but again use 10 to 12 however many you want to use and just break them up until we get them completely over top the breadcrumbs and then just look around and see if there's any large pieces that you really need to break up that were just a little bigger than they should have been. And then once these are broken up, we're going to like, you know, mix it through with the breadcrumbs a little bit just to make sure that it's pushed through. Run your hands across the top. If there are any big pieces, you can break them up that way as well. So push them all around, make sure they're incorporated together. And then we're going to put some seasoning on top of this and we're going to use Kingsford garlic and herb. And you're going to use about like a half a teaspoon of this. It's not a whole lot. We're just going to sprinkle this right over the top. And then we have our packet that has our onion soup mix in it. We're going to go ahead and tear this open and pour it over top of everything else. And as you can see, there's a lot in one of these packets. And that's really great because it has like the onions and everything, but all that seasoning. And that's what we're going for because we really want that. And just use your hands or whatever and mix this through to where it's mixing into all of the breadcrumbs. Because we want to make sure that we get this totally distributed through there before we do anything else with it. Because all those onions, all that seasoning, it just needs to be worked through. So just keep moving it around until you feel that you've mixed it all through there. And if you want to pat it down with your hand like I'm doing, sometimes that helps to push it through. And it doesn't hurt anything at all to do that. And then it's all in there. And this is what we're going to use for the outside of our pork chops. It's that easy. So there's really not much to that part of this. Now we're going to go ahead in a medium sized bowl and we're going to crack two eggs into it. Now we're going to use these with some buttermilk to actually make our mix that's going to help the pork chops adhere to the breadcrumbs. So go ahead and get them in there. We want to break open those yolks and everything before we even put in the buttermilk because you want to mix it up a bit. So if you have a whisk or whatever, go ahead and do that. You can also use a fork if you have one and mix it through until they look like they really have mixed in. And then we're going to bring in the buttermilk in just a minute. But when we do that, you're going to need about a third of a cup of buttermilk. But go ahead and mix your eggs up first and make sure that you've got them. It's just like making scrambled eggs pretty much. So go ahead and add in your third of a cup of buttermilk. You don't have to measure this. You can just do it by eyeball if you want to do it that way. And then we're going to mix this in because we want to get that totally mixed with the eggs. So that way you've got a good coating for these pork chops. So go ahead and just mix it up. Now, once we get this completely mixed, we're gonna bring our pork chops into it. And we're gonna get them in there and get them really coated because we want the outside of them to really have this all over it. And we're gonna let it sit in it for a while because I would leave them sitting there for at least 20 minutes because they're gonna take on a little bit of flavor just from the buttermilk anyway. So just once this is mixed up, Get ready, bring your pork chops in one by one and just move them back and forth in the mixture because you want to make sure every bit of them gets coated. So work your way through. Now, if you have really jumbo pork chops, you probably need a bigger bowl than I have. 
but I'm going to do it this way just so I can actually mix these through, get them coated. And like I said, I'm going to let them sit for a few minutes before anything else is done to them because they really do need time to soak up that moisture because the pork chops, you know, one thing when you're bringing them out to use these, it's good to bring them to room temperature before you use because you want to have them sit out for a while, protect them if you have to with some plastic wrap or whatever, but just bring them up to temperature because it's better to cook them room temperature than cold. Now, once we get it to this point, they've been sitting there for about 20 minutes or so, we're going to go ahead and push them into the breading. So you're going to take and put your pork chop over top of the breading and push it down with your fingers until the stuff is really adhering to it. Now, it's not going to be totally coated every corner, sides, whatever. We're just trying to get the top and bottom surface coated. And if you have to, just pick up some of the breadcrumbs and bring them over and push them into wherever it isn't sticking to and they will actually cover that way and we're just going to do this for each one of the pork chops because we really want to make sure that we get a good coating going here now there is enough here for the breading mix that we made up to do four medium size pork chops now if you have really jumbo large ones you probably would have to make up a little bit more of the breading mix because you want to make sure you have enough to coat it but what i do with this is i do all four of these and then whatever's left on the plate when I'm done, I just take and add it to the pork chops after they're finished, just to make sure there are no holes anywhere where it didn't get even breading. So just go ahead and work your way to the last one like I'm doing here and push it in. And the best thing about this is, is like these things will stick really well with this. And especially for the fact that we added like rich crackers to this, they really hold on to the outside of this when you're mixing this up and like pressing them in it's not a problem everything just stays where it's supposed to and then what we're going to do after this is one if you haven't preheated your oven you need it to 400 degrees and two we're going to get ready to put these on a baking pan so that way we'll have them ready to go in the oven so i'm taking my baking pan i'm lining it with some foil i think that probably you know this is the smartest thing to do when you're making these because you don't want to have to clean up a mess especially when you're ever like cooking meat in the oven and sometimes you've got like cooking and there's that residue that comes underneath or all that crap, you really don't want that. You just basically want to have this in the oven cooked, done and over with. So if you take this, spray it with some nonstick cooking spray and then put your pork chops on it, they're so easy to bring off of it because one, they're not going to stick because you use the nonstick cooking spray, but two, you just peel this lining off and throw it away and you don't have all that mess. And that's the best thing about it. So just go ahead and line them in there, make sure they're not overlapping or anything and that they're in a good place. And once you get that done, like I said, there's extra debris on that plate. Go ahead and use it to add to your breading because you can just bring it over by hand or whatever. And if you see a spot where there isn't enough, that's fine. Now, mind you, I said coat the tops and bottoms. Now the sides of these don't always get coated. You can do that if you want to. I just do the tops and bottoms because that's enough to get that flavor in there. And once this is done, we're going to put these into the oven, like I said, 400 degrees. Now these are going to cook for up to 20 minutes, but you're going to have to turn them halfway through. So just go ahead and flip them after about like 10 minutes to make sure both sides of them bake. And these are mine coming back ready to be flipped because I've already had mine in there for at least 10 minutes or so. And I'm just going to flip them over and send them right back into the oven again for the last 10 minutes of baking. And then once it's done, they're ready to eat. You can serve these with whatever you choose to put with them, vegetables, bread, whatever. And when they're done, they look something like this. Is this what mine looked like when it hit my plate? And these are amazing to eat. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And if you get a chance, check out the Southern Mountain Kitchen website where you can get a free recipe. Check out the cookbooks available from the Southern Mountain Kitchen. And if you'd like to, you could order a cookbook at a discounted price cheaper than Amazon with shipping that is also cheaper than Amazon. So if you get a chance, check it out. And I hope you have a great day.